There are several valid ways to be anti-fast fashion in my eyes. We can only ever buy second hand. We can learn to mend and repair our old fast fashion to keep it going. We could learn to make our own clothes or we can also continue to buy new clothes, but less often, more intentionally and better quality. Hey, if you're new to the channel, I'm Sam and I make videos on slow fashion, style with longevity and maintaining a considered and considerate wardrobe. If you're looking to be a little bit more intentional with your consumption of fashion, then hit that subscribe button to follow along with my efforts and thoughts. This is by no means an exhaustive list and doing all these things together can help to define a style that's completely yours whilst also helping to slow down your consumption and break the cycle of fast fashion. For this video, I wanted to focus on potentially the trickiest one of those, which is buying new things. Personally, I don't believe we should stop buying new things in slow fashion. It's very easy to translate slowing down as not consuming anything at all. For those of us that really enjoy style, then a much more realistic option is to consume much, much less of a much higher quality. Whilst the exploitation, overproduction, waste and pollution caused by fast fashion is firmly the blame of the businesses peddling it, as well as governments failing to support and incentivize, incentivize, incentivize better practices. As style conscious consumers, we can work on an individual level to make sure that our hard earned money goes into the pockets of people who give a shit and are doing better things. Fast fashion was worth $36 billion globally in 2019. Just imagine where that money could have gone and what it could have done if it was spent with smaller, more conscious and integral brands instead. Now this video is not an invitation for you to go out and buy whatever you like with wild abandon, just because it's a small company or sustainably made. I might be repeating myself, but sustainability cannot be bought or sold. As consumers, it's still up to us to keep our consumption in check. And a great way to do that is with a simple checklist. Going through a few simple yes or no's when you're looking at a potential purchase can really help to make sure that you build a wardrobe that will last. To highlight this, I thought I could pinch the highly troubled haul format and show you everything that I've bought so far in 2021. First up, we have my first pair of jeans in probably eight or so years since I really sort of started getting into my own style. And the reason it's taken me so long to buy a pair of jeans is because I've been quite overwhelmed by the world of the denim head. I feared it could be a bit of a black hole for my wallet in terms of searching for the perfect fit, style, fabric weight, slubbiness all the things that denim heads nerd out on. And frankly, I don't need another thing to obsess over. But finally, in 2021, I decided to invest in a pair of jeans from a company I absolutely love, Dawson Denim. I've had one of Dawson's aprons since around 2013, and it's held up so well with regular use. So right there, I have whole heaps of trust in the quality of the garments that this brand produces. They are wonderfully transparent about the mills in Japan where they get their fabric, right down to nerding out about the specific 1920s looms that each one comes off of. And then finally, everything is made to order in a little workshop in Brighton. Another tick. As for the styling of a pair of blue jeans, I'm not gonna blow anybody's mind by saying how flexible they are. They really are a garment that transcends styles, seasons, and trends like probably no other. And for me, the allure of raw denim overwashed is that as they fade and as I wear and inevitably repair them, they will sort of become inherently mine and tell that story over the years. Somebody please pull the plug to this channel if I ever start getting much more of a denim nerd than this. I'm sure we can all agree that the chemical faux fades on fast fashion jeans is one of the worst style and environmental wrongdoings of the past couple of decades. Anyway, I went for the 14 and a half ounce natural plant dyed denim in the white taper fit and I am so happy with them. Next, we've got this shirt, overshirt, jackety type thing from New, 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 New. Um, I believe it's just pronounced New, but I'll put the spelling on screen. I instantly fell in love with this French linen ticking fabric when they posted it on Instagram. And then when I saw the pattern they were planning to make from it, I was sold and, well, to be honest, I ordered one pretty much straight away. 
but I think there's something to be said here for impulse buys and made to order. The couple of week wait really sort of takes the immediate satisfaction out of the impulse purchase. And you don't get that same dopamine hit as handing over some cash and getting something back straight away. But patience and a slower mindset is something I've been working really hard on over the last couple of years. Actually, I find waiting for clothes adds to the value and the enjoyment of them. It really helps to hammer home the time and skill that actually goes into garment production. And with the extra waiting time, greater care in packaging and anticipation, you get a much longer lasting shopping high than with fast fashion. With New, it's a one woman show here in Sheffield, so I know exactly who's made it. And I'm sure if I pressed really hard, she'd tell me where she got the dead stock fabric from as well. From order to delivery, this took 14 days to come, which I think is a real nice contrast to a brand like Zara, who have a business model where it takes 15 days from design to shop floor, and they deliver twice a week worldwide with new designs. In this business model, they make as much stuff as possible, as fast as possible, to ride the wave of the latest trends. They constantly put out new stuff so that you want the new jacket. Not the new jacket, the new jacket. This is why I really believe that continuing to buy new things from small independent makers with care and thought is a much better way than stopping consumption altogether. If we can remove market share from a tiny bit of fast fashion, then they might sit up and listen and think about changing their ways. I also got a smock from the lovely team at Uskies. Now, full disclosure, this was gifted to me over on Instagram, but I still apply the exact same principles when I'm offered a gift, as well as when I'm buying something new for myself. Uskies are based over in Manchester and manufacture in India. Now, like some brands, this isn't something that they try and hide with a designed in or a subtle label. This is something that they proudly do with a great little factory that they actually go out and visit themselves to make sure everything's okay. Made in England is also no guarantee of quality as proven by the uh, horrific conditions at the Boohoo factory in Leicester. Um, and also it's quite scary how relaxed the laws are around what constitutes the label of country of origin. But I'll probably get deeper into that in another video. The biggest thing I love about Uskies is their actively anti-throwaway business model. Each garment comes with an encouraging little repair kit, kind of like a swatch of fabric, some matching thread and a thimble. But if your garment does need a little bit more care than what you're able to give it, they also have a full repair service built into the business model. For me, a brand thinking about repair service and the end of life of that garment is absolutely vital to combating fast fashion. It also gives me loads of confidence in the quality and longevity of the garments that they're producing. As well as the amazing repairs model, they also use a really high quality organic cotton, timeless unisex styling, and have a surprisingly accessible price point. Style-wise, it's on the more casual side for me, and with the price point, durability, and repairability thrown in, makes Uskies an absolute winner of a fast fashion alternative. Now, I probably could have done a much longer, more involved, and more interesting video on clothes that I've seen and loved that I actually didn't buy, because they fell short on a point or two, or I already had something too similar, or something else that did the same job. Maybe that could be another video where I keep track of things I didn't buy. As I alluded to at the start, I firmly believe we have to reassess our value of clothing. Repairing, mending, and caring for clothes used to be the most economical option, but in a short couple of decades, fast fashion has managed to devalue the skill and knowledge of the garment industry so much that it's now so much cheaper to just buy something new and throw the old one away. If you are in a position to do so, boycotting fast fashion and spending your money with a smaller, more integral brand is a great way to send the message that you value skill, you value knowledge, you value materials and the natural resources that we need to make them. I hope you found my new buy checklist useful um, and I'll probably put it over on my Instagram either on the feed or in a highlight so you've got a place to refer back to it. If you've got your eye on anything new then feel free to use it and let me know down in the comments what you've got your eye on. If you found this useful, then please hit the thumbs up button. And I'm currently releasing videos every couple of weeks, maybe with the odd vlog thrown in in between. If you want to keep up in the meantime and see lots more of mm, this little girl, mm, then head on over to Instagram. Um, some uh, Maggie ASMR.